Here's a budget day announcement, isn't it? The um, government hasn't planned for this announcement, and this should rock ministers to the very core. If they're not aware of this, then where have they been? 32% or one in three retailers say the economic conditions in New Zealand are now so dire that they believe they will be gone within a year. Their business won't make it, won't last, won't survive. One in three. It's a huge number. Thousands of jobs, I would have thought, and thousands of shops, businesses, retailers gone. And a staggering 64% of all retailers have failed to meet their sales targets over the past 12 months. This comes as iconic retailer Smith & Coe's has some plans now to close its doors next year in Auckland. Is the Reserve Bank satisfied yet? How much more misery and economic collapse and ruin uh, does it need to see? I mean, the money's dried up. It's taken the money. No one's got any money. Head of Retail New Zealand, Carolyn Young, is um, with us right now. Um, God, it's a grim picture, Carolyn. Good day, good morning. Nice to have you on the programme. Morena, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it is a pretty grim picture right now, and, and uh, certainly everyone's struggling. They really are. So that that um, that survey that has been done, that paints a really um, negative picture, doesn't it? The people just aren't paying their... They're not being able to pay their bills. They're, they're stretched, and they won't make it. Yeah, look, we do the retail radar survey every quarter, and um, it looks at actually the last quarter. Did you meet your sales targets in the last quarter? And 64% of people had said, no, we didn't meet our sales uh, targets. And 32% said, we're unlikely to be here. They're not optimistic that they'll be here this time next year. So, you know, it is really grim right now. And it's just a layering effect of all of the things weighing you down when you've got you know, wage pressures, you've got lease increases, you've got significant increases in insurance, you've got significant crime to deal with, um, uncertainty and low consumer confidence, so low sales, margins are squeezed because supplier costs have gone up, freight's increased. You know, it's just really hard to see, you know, where is that light at the end of the tunnel and what are the levers that we're going to hear today that the government might pull to actually help stimulate the economy and, and give people confidence that we will get out the other side in a timely manner. What do retailers want to see? I mean, well, what is it that um, the government could do today uh, to help retailers? Because 32% of them say they were going to close up in the next 12 months. That's horrendous. That's a crisis yeah. in retail. That's, that's, yeah. I've never heard that figure that before, as high as that. Never heard it before. Yeah, it's significant, right? And so I think there's a range of things. I think, firstly, we'd really want to see a more positive tone to the commentary from the government. We get that it's a really difficult economic environment. We get that um, the government said that the books were in worse shape than what they anticipated. That's kind of a standard thing that happens every change of government, right? Mm. But what we now need to see is what are they actually going to do and how do they give business, retailers and the broader business community, confidence about the levers that they'll pull that will make a difference. So from a retail perspective, there's a wide range of things. We know that crime is significant, so we're expecting, expecting to see a pool of money for investment into, for example, the academies so that they can get up and running. We need to see some change in legislation for them to be able to do the work that they expect to do. Secondly, we do need to have more police on the um, on the work front, right? We know that they've committed to 500 additional police. How are they going to go about getting those and when will we see them? Because a greater presence of police will also be a deterrent against crime and will also help catch more. The police do a great job with the resources they've got. We just need more. So, you know, crime is a big thing in the first instance, right? Um, but and you need you money. You need all... people with money. People need money in their pockets, disposable income. Feel they're feeling confident they can spend, and right now they don't have that, that money or the confidence. Absolutely. So you know the, the tax cuts that we have been promised will be critical, and and look, I imagine they are going to be modest, but something to give people a little bit of confidence that there might be light at the end of the tunnel. That you know. What, what's the time frame that we're looking at? So what will those tax cuts look like? And middle and, and lower lower incomes are the ones that are benefiting. That's the indication that we had from Nicola Willis a few weeks ago. So, you know, that's a broad range of New Zealanders. So the majority of New Zealanders is going to see a benefit. So that's got to be good because we do need to see that confidence change until New Zealanders are more confident. They're not going to go out, as you say, and spend in, in, in retail. But also businesses need to be confident that they can survive through and that it's worth their while investing further into their business as they you know, struggle through these quiet months. You know, the April to September period is quiet for retail, um, coupled with, a, you know, we we're talking about before, like a perfect storm in terms of the economic environment, you know, the the um, you know wage pressures, freight issues, supply chain, all of those things are all coupled in the right at this time where it's really difficult to you know to maintain your margins. I just wonder how how many retailers have got a second sort of wind in them because um, a lot of them were uh, taking loans out themselves during COVID to keep their staff and to you know to to, to stay afloat. I'm sure there was government support there, but that's all dried up, of course. So they took loans out and they, have they got the ability to do this again? I would have thought that some of them would just say, "Bugger this, they can't do it again." Yeah. Now. 
Yeah, look, and I think, Duncan, they're probably well past their second wind. I think they might be on their third or fourth Mm. wind. And what we do know with business loans is that they are at a higher interest rate than a mortgage, for example. Most SMEs will have to guarantee their home against their business for any loans that they've got. So they really are up against it. And it's a really, it's a full-on commitment if they actually, you know, do go to make further um, investment into their their business by getting a loan. or Actually, even if the bank will approve them in this environment, they'll Mm. be much tougher around what they are approving. So it is, you know, what levers can businesses pull for how long? And or do they look at it and go, it's just a little bit too tough right now, I'm done. Yeah. And that's not what we want, right? We want to see a thriving economy across all sectors. What when we say thirty two percent of retailers say they may not make it this next twelve months and are likely to um to close up shop. How many retailers are we talking about? Is it like how many thousand or how many hundred? What what are we talking about? Well, there's um, there's over thirty five thousand retailers in New Zealand, so you're talking, you know, twelve and a half thousand retailers potentially. That's massive, isn't it? The impact of mm. that is massive. Mm. How how do you expect that to play out? Do you think that they're just threatening and just like a protest vote, or they're actually genuinely in in, in the stock and they're, they're in trouble? No, I think they've genuinely looked at, you know, we know that um, the December quarter is critical for businesses to make money in that quarter to survive through the quiet months. Cash flow is king in really these environments. If you don't have the cash to see you through, they'll be looking at what have I got in the bank, what sales are coming in and what levers can I pull? Can I, if a staff member resigns, can I not replace them? Can I negotiate with my landlord to have a, a, a rental holiday? You know, some people we've heard, you know, giving up things like insurance, which is obviously critical that you have your insurance in place for those just in case situations. Mm. So mm. people are really making decisions around what they do and don't spend their money on in order to be able to stay afloat. Because uh, uh, for SMEs, at least remember, that's their livelihood. That's, yes. it's you know, the business is how they actually pay for their 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 groceries and their fuel every week. And just finally, you know, you talk about crime earlier on as well, and you look at um, not just crime, but also how unattractive CBDs can become. Auckland, for instance, Auckland CBD used to be the, you know, yeah. sort of golden mile there. It's far from it now. And where Smith & Coe's is, and on that corner, it's turned into a bit of a debacle. And there's homeless everywhere, and it's just unattractive, right? It's unattractive and unsafe. People think it's unsafe. Auckland Council wants to put yeah. council parking up by 24-7, so charge people nighttime parking. They're doing everything they can in Queen Street to say, uh, bugger off, we don't want you here. We don't want people, we don't want cars. They've, they've said it. Yep, it's a really difficult environment in the Auckland CBD. And I know having spoken to lots of retailers that have got businesses in that area that uh, trading is really difficult. So, you know, and and I think, you know, you'll have seen yesterday from the announcement from Smith & Co, there's a wide range of regions that, that lead into that. But certainly the environment is one of them. The working from home, there's still a lot of people that aren't coming into the CBD to work, so they're not popping down to buy things in their lunch hour or before or after work. Um, you know, you've got rising rents and insurances that are going up. It's just a really difficult time, and people are choosing to go elsewhere rather than come into the CBD. And there's a lot of vacant um, shop fronts in that strip in and around Queen Street. And, you know, the road works have been going on for years and it just makes it a really unattractive proposition for people to want to come into the city. It really does. Kia ora, I appreciate um, your time on, on the programme this morning and, uh, and all the very best. Take care. Kia ora. Thanks. Okay, cheers. Duncan Garner.